discussing the Miraglim, the spies. And we are um, okay. Okay. Uh, we're about halfway through these short lines. We're in the middle of discussing the, the spies, and we're at Dorash Dorash Rova. Rova is the first word of the, of the line. It's just a brief recap of where, where we were holding. The, this parak discusses things that are spoken either in any language or specifically in Hebrew. One of the things that, that needed to be spoken in Hebrew was the blessings and the curses. The blessings and the curses were, were spoken about and the instructions given, were given to Moshe Rabbeinu, but it only occurred after they crossed over the Jordan River. So we started off by explaining the, the sources in the Torah, right? That, that's where it was instructed to Moshe Rabbeinu. Mm -hmm. We discussed that. Then we just discussed the crossing of the Jordan. And once we got started discussing the crossing of the Jordan, we got back and we remembered what happened with the spies, with the Miraglim. So we ended up uh, discussing it. We're in the middle of a discussion of the Miraglim, and then we'll go back to crossing over the Jordan River. And then eventually, ultimately, the blessings and the curses, which happened after they crossed over the Jordan River, either in Gilgal or in Elon Moira, which is in Shechem or in central Israel. Just quite a distance to the border, to, to, the, to the Jordan. Okay. Dorosh Rava. So we're still in the middle of talking about the spies. Uh, I'm sorry. Er, there was a line before that, actually. Okay. We actually had Eretz Echel Yeshva, one line before Dorosh Rava. Okay. The, the, the uh, spies, they came back and they said, Eretz Echel Yeshva. It's a land that eats its citizens. Another, another expression for a short lifespan. Dorosh Rava, Rava taught, I did them a favor. They took it the wrong way. I did them a favor. What does this mean? One second. Basically, wherever they went, they found the dead body. Chashiva did too, and the purpose of this was he hechid an entirety of loyishlo abasrayim. And in other words, why were people dying randomly? So that you know, you have twelve spies, and obviously a group of I don't know which other uh, you know military sent twelve spies together. It doesn't seem like a good idea. Although evidently Yosef Tzadik was convinced the ten tribes were spies, right? Because they all entered from different gates in the city. Anyway. Uh, there's 12 spies together, and uh, Hashem wanted to make it easier for them, that people shouldn't be asking too many questions. So he, he, wherever they went, people were dying. And they, and uh, some say, some say there was Eiv, who was the, the uh, tzaddik, righteous amongst the, um, amongst the Gentiles inside of, inside of Canaan. He died. He died. And because he was the great scholar, everybody was busy, you know, eulogizing him. And, and nobody paid attention to the Miraglam. Heim chash they took it the wrong way. Eretz they called they, they called it a land that eats, eats its own people. Okay. The Miraglam said, We were in the eye, we to ourselves were in the eyes of the giants like grasshoppers. And they thought of us the same way. They had these giants. The Miraglim obviously looked like tiny little specks. And uh, they just they decided that the, the, the giants thought of them as, as uh, grasshoppers. Armor of Misharsha, Miraglim Shakrihava. The Miraglim were liars. Bishlam of Anahibe and Enikhagavim. The fact that you felt like grasshoppers in front of a giant, Lachai, that can make sense. How can you say that we were in their eyes also like grasshoppers? How do you know that? And the Gemara says, it's not, that's, that's not necessarily such a question. Why? When they were uh, making a suda, a meal for the mourners, like we said, there were plenty of mourners, they would do it underneath the eras trees, the cedar trees. So what happened was apparently the Miraglim were hiding under, under one of the, under, underneath one of these trees, and they had to climb up the tree to hide. So they climbed up the tree, 
And uh, Shami, they heard the Kamek Chazin and Inchi Domi Lekamtsi Beilani. We see people that look like grasshoppers that are that are dwelling inside the tree. So, in other words, they actually heard the giant speak of them as as if they were grasshoppers. The entire nation cried. That was that day was the day of Tishva, the day before Tishva. That night, the night that they cried was the night of Tishva. God said, They cried a, a an unreasonable, you know, unreasonable tears. That will be a night of tears for generations. The entire nation said to stone Yeshua and Kalev. And the honor of God appeared in the Oil Mayed, in, in the Mishkan. They took stones and they threw it at God. So they threw it upwards. The people that spoke bad about the land, they died an evil death in a magefa, in, in their own plague. Amr of Shemar Lakish, what exactly happened to them? Shemesum Misam Shonar, they died an unusual, an unusually bitter death. Amr Khini Bar Papa, Rav Khini Bar Papa taught Dorish of Shilo, Ishkfar Tamarta. If Shilo said uh, from the person from the town of Tamarta, Malamish and Shtar of Lashinam, their tongues grew long, the Nafal Al Tiburam, and it, it became as long as, as the as their navel. It was it was up to their, their, their navel. And um, um, uh, worms would come along and crawl crawl from their tongue inside their stomach, and the opposite. And they would crawl out of their stomach and into and onto their tongues. Okay, says, but Askar so they died uh, with Askar. Askar the Gemara says is the most difficult death. It's apparently some some form of asphyxiation. Some inflammation of the throat beginning with the digestive tract. Oh, interesting. So interesting. Breathing passages to become blocked. Right. Yeah. 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 Here he calls it diphtheria. Uh, interesting. Well, that's he called it Ascara. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay. The Kim and Sha'olaha Akhra Shah is from the yard, then Khazir Mayam Kaiman. Once the last of the of the Jewish people exited the Yardin, the waters went back to where, where they started. So the, they they the Kahanim that were in the so we said the, the Aaron came first. It was in the it was in the yard and the water the water started piling up. Then eventually they started moving. And they walked back to the first side that they started. So you think the Jewish people are on the east bank of the river of the river? The Kahanim walk westward to the middle of the to the middle of the river. The water stops and starts piling up. The Jewish people line up and cross east to west. Now they are on the west bank, right? Mm -hmm. And now the Kohanim move back to the east bank. They don't cross the river. And the waters go back. And they, and they travel the distance of three days on, on the banks of the river. Okay. Nimtza, what happened was, the Oroin and th those that carried it, uh, pull out the word v'kohanim is v'nois of hakohanim the kohanim that were carrying it that day as opposed to the regular day which it was levium so the kohanim and the kohanim carrying the aron and the aron itself are in the other mitzadachon on the east bank the israel mitzadachon and the and the the jews are on the west bank okay what happened then nos aron is nice of over the aron carried the people carrying it and it floated across the jordan river on top of the on top of the water. After the nation crossed over the river, and again the Kahana went back to the east, the east bank. So the Oran passed in front of the nation, and, and the Oran effectively carried the people that carried it on top of the water. And because of this, Uza suffered. He 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 was he was punished. Okay, now we'll get into a little bit of discussion of Uza. 
Okay, so what exactly happened? The Oren used to go out to battle with the congregation. We just mentioned this uh, two, three days ago. Um, wait a second. And, and um, uh, during one of the battles, the Jews lost the battle and the Oren was conquered. The Polishtim took the Oren and uh, it did not work out very well for them. They had all sorts of uh, problems with mice and rats. And eventually they decided that if it was God's will that the Oren should go back, they would put it back. They would bring it back. So they did what was it? Like I said, they, they lined up a mother and a, and a nursing calf. And they hooked the nursing calf to a wagon that had the Oren on it. And they put the they put the mother right of right in front of the child, in front of the calf. And the calf turned around and went to went to Israel. And it, it dropped off the Oren uh, at, a, at a specific location. I can't remember. It was, it was I think it's been in Beit Shemesh. Um, and it stopped there. And eventually from there, David made plans to move the Oren to Yerushalayim. And uh, they started moving it. Uzzah grabbed onto the Oren because he saw it was slipping off the carriage. And uh, Uzzah was stricken down. Uh, Uzzah was killed. Because of that, David uh, detoured the Oren to the, lo- the nearest place, which was the house of Ovid Edom. Ovid Edom took care of the Oren properly. Him and his daughters and, and daughter-in-laws all had six children at once. Six healthy children at once. A lot of kids in the house. Anyway, and then eventually you'll see that David brought it back to Jerusalem. That in a nutshell mm. story, we'll, we'll discuss this. We'll discuss it now. Okay, so Shunemar, what was the story of Uzzah? By Avoyu Ad Gurin Kidain, they came to the the uh, Gurin is the um the silo of Kidain. We'll soon see maybe there's another name to it. The granary. Vayishlach Uzzah as Yadai Lechaz as Aaron. Uzzah stuck out his hand to support the Aaron that would seem to have been falling out of the carriage. God said to him, Uzzah, Noisev Nosa, Atzma the Kolshkan, if it can carry those that are carrying it, don't you think it can carry itself? God was angry with Uzzah and he struck him down on the spot. The question here is what the word Al Hashal means. According to what version is Al Iske Shalai because he, he uh, tried supporting the Aaron? Uh, one second. Um, one second. Yeah, yeah. So the word shall could be uh, could be something that one second. Yeah, something that's suspended upright. So it means that he actually he actually relieves himself in front of the Aaron. Okay. Now, obviously, the, this opinion clearly. Pro- Almost certainly disagrees with 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 it. So there's two approaches: one that U- Uzzah made a mistake, the other one that is sort of negligence. And uh, the next gemara is Vayomas Sham Im Aron Im Aron Kim. We are seven lines from the bottom of the page. First one line is Bifanov. He died there on the spot with the Aron of God. What does that mean? With the the Ark of the Covenant. What, what's with it? The Ark of the Covenant obviously didn't didn't die. It's inanimate. Uzzah will enter the world to come. When he died, he died with the Oren of God. Just like the Ark will be is, is eternal. In other words, the Ark is not one of the vessels that was captive. The Ark was hidden. Uzzah as well will enter the world to come. The Oren was removed from the, the Holies of Holies 18 years before Jerusalem was conquered. Uh, its impending conquest was realized at the time, and Yeshio instructed that the Aron be hidden. The Aron was never conquered. <clears throat> Obviously, it was conquered by the Plishtim, but it was never conquered again, and the Aron still still exists today. Where do we, where is it? Obviously, we don't know where it is, but I don't think anyone knows where it is for that matter. You know, the base of the Vatican is other, other, <laughs> other vessels, if, if, you know, if yeah. that's true, but, um, but it certainly wasn't the Aron, because the Aron wasn't the Aaron was the Aaron seemed to have had a spiritual hiding and spiritual hiding. It's unlikely that anyone's come across it. Yeah, there are stories. Okay, apparently somebody found it, then he died. Okay, who knows? <clears throat> Talmud relates stories of, of 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 people that people that found it in the time of the Second Temple, but they had a, they they died before they had a chance to specify exactly where it was. Okay. Um. 
anyway, so, so Uzzah merits the world to come. It was a mistake, and 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 he and he 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 you know he, his death atoned for his mistake. David was upset that God struck down Uzzah. The word Vayichar means his face became like a charora. Charora is not just a cookie. It's, it's more like a lace cookie. A cookie where all the oil drains and it becomes like filled with holes. Are you familiar with what I'm talking about? A lace, lace cookie made like in a frying pan. Just has like holes all over. His face, his, his face basically was, was drained. It was it was uh as our as our explain it. Is this your face on coal? Yeah, yeah. Do they explain how that would look on a face? There's like a word for it. Darkened with anguish. Darkened with anguish. Okay, there we are. Send that fake bread. Yeah. Flaring the burning of anguish. Yeah. So it was it was it was dark. Okay. Based David anguish after that. So the Gemara is, is interesting because the word Vayichar is often associated with anger, regular anger. Not this is sort of a darkened complex, darkened complexion. It's more than just anger. Does it also mean that his face became like a biscuit? So the Gemara says siv af. Generally, in the word Vayichar is written, it says Vayichar af, and he became angry. Over here, it does not say he became angry. It says Vayichar. It was difficult for him. Af like siv af doesn't say anger. Dorosh Rav, Rav taught, and they man enosh David. Why, why uh, was David punished by having this event? He was trying to transport the Aaron back to Jerusalem, and he was, and you know, seemingly he was punished by the fact that Uzzah was was, was stricken down. The Gemara says, "Mipneshikaral adivrei Torah zmiras," because he called words of Torah a song. Shenemar zmiras hayoli chukecha bebeis migurei. Your 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 uh, teachings were a song to me. God said to Torah, God said to David, King David, uh, words of Torah of which it is written that if, if a person sort of distracts himself from it, he, you know, he, he, he loses himself. In other words, the, the Torah has to be recorded at a much more level, a much greater level of seriousness than just song. That requires a much closer concentration and intensity than song. At the Kara Isen Zmiris, you're going to call it Zmiris. I'm going to have you succumb to a sin that even the even the children know is incorrect. Yoden, I say, they, they recognize this. The, the the verse states that the Bnei Kahas were not given wagons. The 12, if anyone remember, recalls Parshas Nosai or the end of Parshas Truma, I'm sorry, Parshas Vayakel and Bikude, we learned that Nisim were uh, kind of lazy in terms of what they brought for the Mishkan. And ultimately their contribution ended up being that when the Mishkan was consecrated, they brought the first sets of sacrifice along with six peer, six wagons and piers of oxen to drive the wagons. The wagons were divided up, four of them to the, I believe it was Mirari that carried the structure, and two of them to, uh, I can't remember the, 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 the other brother of Kahas. Yeah, two of them. Kahas didn't get any wagons. Why? Because Kahas carried the vessels themselves. The vessels themselves were carried by people. So this is quite obvious that Kahas did not put the Oroin on an Agola. They didn't put an Oroin on, on, on the wagon. It's carried by people. The Iu Asia Bagalta. But Dovra Melach um, carried the Oroin on a wagon, which was a mistake. The people of Beit Shemesh were struck, were struck as well because they saw the Aaron. So the Mars says, because they saw that's why God had to, had to strike them. One of them says that uh, they, 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 didn't, they didn't stop to accord the Aaron respect. They engaged in their work casually as if the Aaron wasn't there. The Khan Amr and one says, Mili Nami Amr. They were quite upset about the Aram. 
They said they, this is what they said. They said man omrech the the imrayas or man ata aloch the ifaisis. Um, we're on top of thirty five B now. Uh, one second. In other words, you know, they, they were sort of upset at the R and they, they said, "Who angered you that you decided to let yourself be taken into captivity? If you can control yourself, then you should have prevented yourself from getting into ca 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 captivity. And now that you're back." You know, it's impossible to 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 please you. So, th th and because the, this is obviously, uh, you know, there's a heretical component here, and therefore the people of Beit Shemesh were, were were struck. The Yachba'am and the nation was the the people of Beit Shemesh were were struck. Shivim ish, seventy people. The Chamishim elof ish, and fifty thousand people. So, which one was it? Seventy or fifty thousand? Rabbi Vuv, Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Vuv, Rabbi Lazar taught. Chad Amar Shivim ish, Hayu, V'Kol Echad Me'Echad Shalak Chamishim elof. There were 70 people, and each of them was was the equivalent of 50,000 people. In other words, these were great scholars. The Khadamar and the other one says it was it was it was it was more people with a lower level of scholarship. Hamishim Elef, there were 50,000. Each one of them was a scholar, a scholar as great as the 70 people that sat in Sanhedrin. Okay. Eventually, the Aaron was diverted to the house of Ivid Edom. Like we said, Ivid Edom had, had uh, many, many children and grandchildren. Eventually, it was time for the Aaron to go back to Jerusalem. And what happened was, when the people who carried the Aaron walked six steps, he, he slaughtered a, a, an ox. It says that he also slaughtered seven oxen and seven seven rams. So which was it? For every step, there was one animal slaughtered. Marie, I think, is a, a fatted. It's two animals. It's a, I think Marie is a fatted, fatted, uh, yeah, a fatted. Uh, um. Okay, so for each step was 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 two animals, an ox and a fatted ox. I call sheish v'sheish psias for every set of six steps. Shiva Parm Shiva Elam, um, seven seven oxen and seven rams. Amalur of Chizda, a lot of steps between Beit Shemesh to Jerusalem. Amalur of Chizda came a laces called Eretz Yisrael Bomis. So you're turning all of Eretz Yisrael into sacrificial altars. Amalur of Chizda, of Chizda says no, it was a six of that. A kol sheish v'sheish psias shoramari. For every set of six uh, six steps, there was a an ox and a fatted ox. For every set of six steps, every 36 steps, there were seven animals of each. Okay, the place where Uzo was, was struck was called Kidain in the book of Divar Hayamim. In the book of Shmuel, it is called Nochain. In other words, there was the granary of Kidain or the granary of Nochain. Siv Kidain or Siv Nochain. Two words for that granary. Either it was called Kidain or it was called Nochain. Two places in Tanakh. Um, Rav Yechon, Rav Yechon explained that B'tchilo, initially it was Kidain. It was a place of judgment. It was Nochain. Eventually it worked itself out. Obviously, Ovid Edda made himself worthy. And therefore, it was called Nochain. Okay. Um, now we get back to the discussion of the Jewish people cr crossing over the Jordan River. And, um, and uh, you know, Receiving the blessings and the curses. Nimtzat Aimer, we find that Shloisha Mini Avonim. There were three three groups of stones. One of them, one set of stones were the stones that Moshe erected in Eretz Mayav on the east bank of the Jordan River. Shanemer, as the Pasik says, but Aver Hayardin on the other bank, the bank that's outside Eretz Israel. Eretz Mayav in the land of Mayav Hayal Moshe Be'er. Moshe explained, started and explained in Torah. L'hal Noemer v'chasav d'aleim as kol Torah has as kol diver haTorah has ayis be'er hetev. V'asi be'er be'er. We learn that the stones, the stones that Moshe erected, it says it says with them be'er, and uh, because it says that Moshe explained the, the Torah be'er, we say that that was that was the stones had were written on them, uh, you know, all all the different languages explaining the Torah. <laughs> yeah. So the Torah was written down in, in many languages on these stones that were erected in Mayav. Okay. 
Uh, and another set of 12 stones that Yeshua collected in the Jordan River. 12 stones Yeshua piled up in the center of the Jordan River. And another set of 12 stones that they erected in Gilgal. It happens these 12 stones that each of them took from the Jordan River, they eventually brought with them to Hagrizim uh, and where they turned them as the stones of an altar. They turned it into a mizbech, and those same stones were brought that evening to Gilgal, where they where they slept, and they were they wrote the entire Torah on them. We'll, we'll discuss that, and um, and they were erected in Gilgal as a copy of of the Torah. Okay, Tanur Abaron, the rabbis taught Ketzah Kosvi Yisrael as a Torah. How exactly was it written? Rabbi Yehuda Eimer Al Gabi Avonim Kasvu. They wrote the Torah on top of stones. And you should write on the stones all, all, of, all of the Torah. In other words, it was etched directly in the stone. And then they plastered over the stone. So, so this is the opinion of Rabbi Huda. Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Shimon says to him, if that's the case, Torah. How the purpose of this was that the nations of the world had a copy of the Torah that they can read and understand. But if you etched it into the stone and then you plastered it over, there's no way to see it. Amrlai, <clears throat> so he responded to him. This is Rabbi Yehuda responds, Bini Yisera Nosam HaMakadosh Baruch Hu. God gave him an, an extra level of understanding. <clears throat> they sent scribes to kill for Zasid, and they recognized they had to pull off the plaster. Visiu and and they were able to, and and they removed it and from there they were able to read it correctly. According to according to Rabbi Huda, uh, they they uh, they they merited punishment because they should have studied the Torah, should have contemplated a a more religious life, and they did not. And they had it available to them because the stones were written in every language. If you think of a Rosetta Stone, this must have been, you know, this is a super Rosetta Stone, right? <laughs> 70 languages in it. <clears throat> okay, obviously, it wasn't one stone, it was many stones, and they were very large stones, etc. Okay. Rabbi Shimon, I remember Shimon says, Agabi Sid they wrote it in the plaster. Because Vula Helamato and Banam was written, Lamana Shola Yilmudu Eskam Las Eskichol. Yeah, so that they should learn not to engage in the abomination that the nations of the world do. From here we see that if the if the nations of the world would would stop their abomin their abominable activities, then we would accept them and we, could, we you know they, they were able to convert. My time with Rav Shimon. Rav Barshila explains what's the reason of Rav Shimon. The nations were burnt on, in, in plaster. What does this mean? Al iske sid. The nations merit punishment for failing to read what was written in the plaster, on top of these, on top of these stones. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda said, "Ki sid ma sid ein le'takana el asreifa af oisam akusam ein le'takana el asreifa." Rabbi Yehuda said, "Just like plaster, ju just like just like the plaster, the only way to get rid of it is to burn it." So too, the nations of the world, because of their their refusal to study these tablets, they they the punishment they will merit is burning. Okay, one second. Tanya, who does this this price go go like? Bishavisa Shivya, if you go out on a voluntary war and and you want to take take a woman captive. So you, there's a whole there's a whole process called the fast tire of how one is allowed to marry a woman he he he, he captured in war. Anyway, Shavi Shiv, you're allowed to take a captive. The rabbis Canaan and Shabbat Lawrence, even though the the core seven nations of Canaan, there was a positive mitzvah to 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 kill them because their their um their behavior was so abominable, they were considered irredeemable. But that was only true of those that lived in Israel. Those that lived outside of Israel, if they wanted to convert, they're welcome to convert. The Gemara says, "Come on, Kerub Shimon." This is like the opinion of Rav Shimon that says the purpose of writing out these stones was to give everyone the ability to convert. Evidently, if even if they live out if they live outside of Israel, they are welcome to convert and and accept accept Torah. Torah. Okay, let's continue. 
Let's examine the amount of miracles that occurred that day. Over Yisrael Asiyard, and they crossed over the Jordan. And again, that was a miraculous, you know, river crossing. Ubo Lahagrizim Laharevel, yes, and Mishishamil. They went to Hagrizim and Arevel. This is probably according to the opinion that says that Hagrizim and Arevel was in Ela and Moira, the area of Shrem. So it's 60 mil, it's quite a distance from where they crossed the river. The Ain Kolberi and no one was able to stop them. They just continued walking. Nobody was able to stand in their way. Anyone who tried to, the Yad Nitras, he lost control of his bowels. Shenemaras emosi, my fear, a shalach of Fanecha, Bahamosi is called Omash or Tovi Bam. The people that were in front of them were so stricken with fear, they couldn't contain themselves, uh, you know, from their bodily needs. The Omar, the Pasuk says, Tipul Aleim emosi Bafachad, it will fall on them fear and, and, and trembling. Adyavar Amcha Hashem, until the nation comes in to, and takes control of the land. What does that mean? Adyavar Amcha Hashem, Zubir Rishonah, this is the first time they entered Israel. Ad Yavor Amzu Kanisa until until the chosen nation enters. Zubi Ashnia, that's a reference to the second time they would enter the land, 70 years after the, after the destruction of the temple. Emar Miyato, from here you should cut you, you should understand. The Jewish people were worthy that when they came back to Israel the second time, there were way less miracles, by the way. Way less. As a matter of fact, the people that saw the first temple and saw the second temple, they started crying. Because it was so bereft of, of miraculous nature that the first space of Mekdash had. Okay, what happened? El Shigar Machet, the, the sin caused them to lose out. And therefore, they did not merit a miraculous homecoming the way, the way that it, it had ought to have been. And then they brought the stones and they built them as Beach. The Saduba said, and they plastered it with plaster. The Kosvolaim, they wrote on it as Kol Divriya Torah B'Shivim Loshan. And they wrote all the words of the Torah in 70 languages. Shanemar, as the Torah says, Be'er Hetev, it was, it, it was well understood. So etching out the entire Torah in one day seems also like quite a miraculous occurrence, especially in 70 languages. You know, it's quite, quite, a, quite the skill set. V'helu Oilas Shlomim, and they brought Oilas and Shlomim, V'achal and Shasu V'samchu, they brought the carbonites and they gave the blessings and the curses. They, they picked up the stones. They went and, and rested in Gilgal. Gilgal is also quite a distance from Shem. You'll, you'll, you'll erect these stones in Gilgal, in Gilgal where you'll sleep that night. And you'll, you'll, uh, yeah. And Yeshua erected those 12 stones in Gilgal. Again, the stones were chosen the, that day, earlier in the day, to be part of the Mizbeach, have the Torah written on them, and then be erected where they sleep that night. But where did Yeshua end up erecting them? In Gilgal. It means he traveled from, from Avra Yardin to Elin Marah, back down to Gilgal all on the same day. And in Gilgal, he erected the stones because the Torah says he, stones are erected in Gilgal. Okay. Okay, one of the things God promises is Tzirah. I don't know, do they translate the word Tzirah? Oh. I think Tzirah is a bug, but it's not, a, it's not really, it's a mosquito. They translate it as a hornet. A hornet, okay. <laughs> so, that, that's the proper, that's certainly the, the right perception of it. So it's a it's a horn, it's a it's a vicious a vicious bug. So Tana Tzira over Imam. So God promised the Jewish people that He will send the Tzira, the hornet. And again, I don't know if it's actually a hornet, but it's the same concept of a hornet. It's a vicious attacking bug that flies. So and this was a promise. Hashem promised us that the Tzira would protect us. over Imam. It did not come along. The Imam says, "V'lo it didn't come. V'aksiv v'shalachli it's a Tzira lefanecha. I'll send the Tzira in front of you." What happened was that Sira went until the Jordan River, did not enter with them. From the Jordan River, it shot its, its poison and it blinded the nations and uh, it castrated them as well. I will wipe out the Amari from, from before you. Asher Kegeva Arozim Gavu, whose prominence is the prominence of cedar wood, 
the chosen who ka uh, you know, trustworthy like um, what's that lineum? Trees. Another type of tree. It's a specific variety. Oak. 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 is oaks. Oak is strong. Oak. It's strong like oak. The Ashmid period mimal, and I will take away his his fruits from on top. The and his roots mitachas from underneath. This is a reference. Period mimal is a reference to their eyes that were blinded, and shorosha mitachas the roots from the bottom is a reference to the fact that they were castrated. Pop, okay, that's the so that's the first explanation. In other words, the tzira the, the tzira was an, it served as an attacking force for the first battle, but it did so from the other side of the Jordan. The other version is Repop Amr state tzira savoy. There were two sets of hornets, one of Moshe Rabbeinu, one of Yeshua, the Moshe Le'ovar, the Yeshua Ovar, the, the tzira of, of Moshe Rabbeinu did not cross over the Jordan River, the tzira of Yeshua crossed over the river, and that tzira helped them in battle, win, you know, conquer the land of Israel. Okay, enjoy, enjoy your day. To the extent we're able to maintain a little bit of heads, we will continue to do that. Okay.